Ya ayuhul ladina amanu, believers, ittaqullah, be aware of Allah. Fear from disappointing Allah, be conscious of Allah. Haqqa tuqatihi, the way he deserves it. Fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayuhul ladina amanu, ittaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida and say beautiful, clear words when you speak, speak clearly, speak with intention, speak with clarity. Alright, so <clears throat> the second month of this uh, Islamic calendar is about to start upon us. It's, I think, starts tomorrow, right? Today is the last day of Safar. You all know something incredible happened on that month, on the 12th of that month. You should know that. I am going to tell you a couple of stories. The purpose behind it, not just being a story, but there's a profound lesson behind it. I was searching um, how Allah honors Prophet wasallam in the Quran. I was searching and searching and came across uh, one of the teachers that I follow, some beautiful things. So some of the things he said, I'm going to reiterate to give the full credit where it's due. So we'll start with the story first. <clears throat> Once upon a time, where the Prophet ﷺ was in his apartment, in his room, you know, those rooms, apartments, were in houses the way we, you and I have this, it was just one tiny room. And someone came from outside, from outside and started calling him. He said, oh Muhammad, come out and teach us something that you know. Pay attention. He said, yeah, Muhammad, come out. When Arabs call each other in Arabic, it is okay, it's perfectly fine to say, ya and name that person. Ya Muhammad, ya Ahmad, ya Jamil, whatever the name is. Perfectly okay way of greeting someone. That is to greet each other like that, your buddies, your friends. When it comes to the Prophet Wasallam. That is not okay whatsoever, at all. This guy did it. Well, guess what happened? Immediately on the spot, within split second, revelation came. Let me pause the story here and come back to it. So you will appreciate it. In the Quran, Allah talks about others in the same manner. For instance, Musa, Moses. Ya Musa, Allah says, oh Musa, come and talk to me. And Musa climbs the mountain, go to talk to Allah. Ya Isa, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Adam, Ya Yahya, you hear the names just like that. Just like that. Ya and the name, followed by the name. Guess what you do not find in the Quran? Look at it cover to cover. You will never ever find saying Ya Muhammad. It doesn't exist. Muhammad is a beautiful name. Muhammad means someone to be praised on a continuity, continuous basis. Beautiful name. But you don't find it. Why not? Because the status of a Prophet وسلم, the honor, the reverence that we're supposed to have for him is a lot higher than that. It doesn't mean the other Prophets are not important. That's not what it is. But it shows how much Allah, remember I started with this saying, how does Allah honor Prophet وسلم, in the Quran? This is how he honors him. Never calls him Ya Muhammad. What does he call him then? He calls him by his uh, titles. You have heard those titles multiple places. Ya Mudathir, Ya Muzammal, all that. On top of it, if he wants to address him, how does Allah talk to him? How does he say? He says, Ya Ayyuha Nabi. This word, Ayyuha, is incredibly important when you're studying Arabic. Ya Ahmad is okay. Ya Ahmad means, hey Ahmad, how you doing? Ya Ayyuha Ahmad means, oh Ahmad, I have such a love and respect to you. I have the highest level of reverence to you. I really um, want to talk to you. I really want to be at your company. This is how Allah talks to him. Ya Ayyuha Nabi, Ya Rasulullah, everywhere in the Quran. Never Ya Muhammad, ever. Well, you could say, wait a second, I've heard Muhammad in the Quran, 
the name, yes, Muhammad in the Quran appears about five times. Guess what follows immediately after that? Search this in the Quran yourself. This is, you know, you know me, when I come here, give khutbah, I give homework. This is your homework, go look, at, look it up. Look up for the Muhammad and you find something incredible every single time, right after, right before. Muhammad Rasulullah, every single time. The Prophet of God, not by itself, Ya Muhammad. Ever. In the history of Islam, you'll never find this anywhere. Give you an example. Abu Bakr, the, the first Khalifa, the first Caliph, the best friend to the Prophet ﷺ. There was, didn't, a day didn't pass by that these two didn't meet and talked about something. Not a single day passed. You will never find in the history of Islam once Abu Bakr saying, oh my friend, because they were best of the best friends. They were brothers. They loved each other. Never you find it. Every, every time you find, if you find something, it says, Ya Rasulullah. That's how we address him. His wife never said, Oh, my dear, oh, my sweetheart, oh, my lover, nothing. Ya Rasulullah, every single instance. His daughter never said, Daddy, was he a dad to the daughter? Of course he was. Oh, father, you never find this in, in the history of Islam, except to say, Ya Rasulullah, every single instance. Allah is teaching you and I something. What is the relationship between you and the Prophet ﷺ? You have to have this level of respect. Go back to the story. When the guy called, Oh Muhammad, Ya Muhammad. Allah sent a revelation, immediately said, I'm going to just translate it in any colloquial way to you. So we could hit the, to get it home, to message home. He said, Allah said, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are that you're talking to? He is not your buddy. Don't you know amongst you is the prophet of God? How dare you? You talk to him like that. To call him as if you call each other. I'm not making this up. This is the beginning of Surah Al-Hajarat. Read it. Read the beginning for the ninth Surah. Allah says, don't you dare call each other with the name the way you call each other. Call him the way you call each other. And Allah says, if you don't care what I say, here's what's going to happen. Which is the scariest part. The first, at the, the, the end of the second ayah, I think it is. And tahbata a'malakum. Usually you and I, when we do, when we fall short of our obligations, we do some mistake, raise our hands, when ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive us. And usually you hear from the Quranic and uh, Sunnah that your bad deeds is going to get wiped clean as you do certain activities. You fast, you make dua, you do all that stuff. It gets cleaned up, wiped up. In this instance, Allah says, if you don't watch your mouth, if you don't watch your mouth and you just call the Prophet salam, as if you call your buddy, every single good thing that you have done, every single good thing will be wiped clean as if you've never done it before. That means you went to all these umrahs, all these hajj, you went to all these charities, you fasted, you give zakah, you, you were nice, you were gracious, you were courageous, you were the most awesome human being you could be on this face of the planet. As soon as you violate this, you did not respect the Prophet ﷺ, wipe clean, as if you haven't done anything, directly from the Quran. That is the level of respect Allah has towards his Prophet Wasallam. Let me tell you another story. I've mentioned this before too. During the Meccan period, the first 13 years of Islam, when the Prophet Wasallam prayed, you know which direction he prayed? He prayed towards Jerusalem. Masjid al-Aqsa. So pay attention to this. Visualize this with me. Kaaba is here. Jerusalem is here. He would make sure to pray this way that always the Kaaba is in between the Jerusalem. Masjid al-Aqsa. So he always prayed this direction. Kaaba is right in the center. Never the other direction. Always. He goes to Medina. Guess what happens in Medina? Masjid al-Aqsa, Kaaba, Medina is here. If you want to pray towards 
Masjid al-Aqsa, your back will be towards Kaaba. Every, every time. There's no way around it. This is how it works. So Prophet ﷺ has this unease in his heart. He's just not comfortable backing his, his back being towards Kaaba while he's praying. One day he became overwhelmed. And this is the hardest part for me to explain. See if I can keep my composure. My, the best part of Quran for me. One day he got overwhelmed. Let me pause the story here and tell you another story about prophets. Anytime any prophet in the Quran, any single prophet in the Quran or any other human being wanted something from Allah, had to call upon Allah, had to make dua, had to say, verbalize something, utter something, say something, Ya Allah, this, 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 and Allah will grant as he wished. Guess what Prophet ﷺ did? One day he's in Medina, it's a time of the prayer, he's being overwhelmed, and Allah records this in the Quran, right smack in the middle of Surah Al-Baqarah. All he did is look up. That's all he did. He did not say a single word, a single word. He didn't say anything. All he did is look up. That's it. Guess what Allah revealed in the Quran immediately? He said, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجَكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ Certainly, without a doubt, we see you looking up and toward the sky. And then Allah says, then here's what I'm going to do. فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا So pay attention. Those of you who understand Arabic or read Arabic. فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ Let me say it again. فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ There's a minimum of five different levels of emphasis in this word, in this, in this thing. Which means what? For sure, without a doubt, certainly I will be the, behind this decision to make sure change the Qibla forever for the rest of the humanity. For what reason? All he did is look up. What reason? Litardaha, so that you will be happy. The creator of this world, when you go out next time and at night, look up, look at all the stars. Go to somewhere really dark, look at the stars and you actually see Milky Way, all these cloudy thingy. Galaxies you see. The creator of this world created all that stuff. But he wants to make sure that his beloved is happy. His prophet is happy. He changes the entire course of direction of the prayer for humanity to make him happy. So where are you with this? The question is, where are you and I? Where are we? What is it that we, what kind of reverence we need to have towards his, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, so that we will not fall, on, uh, fall short of uh, our uh, um, actions, activities. This is what Allah did. This is what Allah did to make him happy. What is it that you and I need to do to make him happy? There's one thing that you know that we read, um, in, um, I'm going to read it soon in the second part of the khutbah, which is how to send blessings to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, Allah says in his book, and here's another way Allah honors his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu. Allah and all the angels, however number you can count, they do something on a continuous basis. Yusalluna ala nabi. They give peace and blessings, salutations to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayhul ladhina amanu, believers, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. You do exactly the same thing what Allah does. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innak hamid majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innak hamid majid. This is another way you show the love. Allah shows his love to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by praising him on a constant basis. 
commanding his angels to do the same thing on a constant basis and asking you to do. You're going to be the recipient when you do it. That means anytime that you hear his name, you should sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Anytime you hear Muhammad, you say sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Anytime that you hear anything about him, his pronouns, you say sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You cannot be lazy with it. I stood here for the past 15 minutes, probably I said it 35 times. You should have said 35 times sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because each time you say it once, you get 10 rewards. If you did it 35 times, you get 350 rewards. Undeniable, incredibly awesome rewards in your accounts right now. That's what Allah is giving you. The chance to do. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين. And let's close with this. Allah says in His book, and that's how we end خطبة. Says here's the success, the recipe for success. One of the recipes for success in the Quran, as you have seen, there are multiple places. And what is that? Let me get my fingers straight here. Three things you gotta do. Three things you have to avoid to be successful. I could sit there and talk about it for multiple minutes, or I can give you as a homework. And let me give you as a homework the address, 1690. Surah 16, ayah number 90. That's your homework. And what is that homework? Allah says, these are the few things you have to do. It's a command. It's not just a casual conversation. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa itayid al qurba. Got it? Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa itayid al qurba. These are the three things Allah says you have to avoid. Otherwise, it's going to kill the first three things that you're supposed to do. Wa yanha an al fahsha'i wal munkar. وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِيْ يَعَذَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ I said it, I reminded you, now you heard it. 1690, go get it. So that is the end of khutbah. What we're going to do, inshallah, someone is going to lead the prayer and just give me a minute to exit. And let's pray, inshallah. Let's get ready for prayer.